Okay, in this video we're going to be looking at MATLAB and basically getting started if you've never used it before. Uh, the easiest way to think of MATLAB is in this command window here that it's just like a scientific calculator. I can type in uh, mathematical expressions, so uh, sine of pi or positive of 1 etc and it's going to evaluate them for me uh, interactively. That's the function of this command window. So you can type in uh, quite detailed uh, calculations and it will evaluate the answers for you. You'll see that at the moment it's using the variable ANS or ANTS to assign the answer to and we see it in the workspace. So within this workspace we see the list of variables which are currently being used by, by MATLAB and ANTS is always the one that it use. As well as that, we've got the current folder, which is a bit like Windows Explorer. So the disk being the current folder up here, and it lists MATLAB functions and scripts, as well as other files on your computer. As well as this, we've got a ribbon up here with a few buttons that you may find useful. Now for me, it's the new script and the open buttons, which are typically the most useful for me. So apart from entering in basic calculations, MATLAB has all of the basic commands that you might expect a uh, mathematical uh, piece of software to have. So all the elementary functions as we see here. And if you want a little bit more information on one of them, it's really easy to be able to type help sign for example. And it will provide uh, a short summary of how that function works. Help log. Ah, that's the natural logarithm for example. And we also have exp and XPM and so forth. So there's a whole lot of commands that we can quickly browse through by just using that help menu and then jumping through these hyperlinks. If we get to a point where we go actually we want a bit more information we can type on dot log which brings up the uh, help documentation and there's always a whole lot of examples which being MATLAB means that they are typically very very good and very very easy to use. All right, mesh grid, some map, a log, and then some plotting. And as you can see here, 3D plotting, no problem in MATLAB. So the help is really, really useful and really, really good. Um, and lots of examples um, for working your way through if you haven't used one of these functions before. All right, Ooh. don't worry about that small Java error. All right, as well as real numbers, MATLAB is also very good at complex numbers. So if you want to be able to do calculations with complex numbers, no problem to MATLAB. So for you guys working in power, uh, real and reactive power, signal processing or control domains, anything where you use complex numbers quite a lot, MATLAB has absolutely no problem with that. However, the real power of MATLAB is in its ability to work with vectors and matrices, also known as arrays. So we can create an array using square brackets, as I've done here. Um, and we can also create matrices by using the semicolon, which basically indicates that we're going to go down onto the next line below. All right, so we can create matrices of any particular dimension that we want. Um, and it could be hyperdimension, so 3, 4, 5, 60, if you so desire. All right, but as you see here, very, very easy to create matrices. We don't need to declare different data types, just the square brackets um, and the semicolons to remember if you want to be able to create a matrix. If you don't want to type out all of the numbers in, let's say, an increasing uh, pattern of numbers, we can use this colon operator. And what that colon operator does is it says, from one and steps of one to five, generate me a vector. Or we could go in 10, and steps of minus 1 to 1 and generate a vector like that. Alright, so colon, very powerful, very easy to use, um, and especially useful when you do indexing, which we'll cover in a later video. For now, just remember that colon is useful if you want to specify the increment between the numbers, rather than the total number of numbers themselves. If you want to specify the total number of numbers instead, for example, 0 to 2 times pi, uh, give me the increment that will give me 10 numbers. Mm, I don't know, Linspace can do that for me. Alright, and there is automatically worked out that increment for us. So, colon, when 
you want to control the spacing between the numbers, lin space if you want to just say give me a certain number of numbers between a range. Alright, so lin space, colon, great for creating arrays, um, and very, very powerful when you come to start doing some plotting, which I'll show you shortly. Just another note on matrices is that there are built-in functions for creating matrices such as the identity matrix, zeros matrix, random matrix, magic number matrix and so forth. Right, so they're all built into the language as well, as well as you can diagonalize a vector or whatever you happen to want to do. So lots of power within matrices of which normally you'll be using to do with linear algebra and, and matrix calculations, which we cover in a later video. Alright, one of the things which makes MATLAB so powerful is the ability to vectorize. And by vectorize I mean if I wanted to say take sine of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it just works. And that's something you're going to see a lot of in MATLAB, is that the ability that, okay, I've passed it a vector. I don't need to worry about the fact that I might need a for loop or anything like that because it's taken care of internally. I want to calculate log 10 of, say, 1 step to 10 to 100, no problem. All right. Once again, also works uh, as a vectorized function. So that term vectorized means that you've written a function or you can use a function like log 10 or sine or any of the other mathematical functions give it a vector and you'll get returned a vector as well. So that you can operate on vectors and perform calculations without having to go out first element, second element, third element and so forth. Let me give you an example. I want to plot a sine wave and I want to plot it between 0 and 2 pi. So I'm going to create a variable t which is going to be the time and we're going to plot it between 0 2 times pi with 100 elements. I'm going to add a semicolon to the end of that statement to suppress it being printed to the screen. Otherwise I'll see 100 elements on the screen. I'm then going to take sine of each of those elements and I'm going to plot it. Plot t comma y and there's my sine wave. So a few things that we've done here that show the power of MATLAB. Number one, we've created an array of 100 numbers between 0 and 2 times pi in one line. We've calculated the sine of each of those numbers in one line with one function call, and then we plotted it in one line. So, very, very powerful, and we didn't have to type a lot of code to get a reasonable result. And we can annotate that plot and play with it a lot more, and you can see that in a later video. But a few things to note here, t is a variable, so we see it in the workspace, and it tells us the value of it. We've got 100 doubles in there, and we've got 100 doubles in Y, and it tells us the minimum and maximum values. And you, you can customize this to show us information depending on uh, your preferences. As well as that, it's quite interesting to also see, for example, uh, the, let's say, the end value of time. So in this case we're looking at the last value within our T-Array. One thing I want to show you here is that although we did calculate, well, although we specified 2 times pi, and we know pi has a lot more decimal points than just 4, MATLAB will only ever display a number which it thinks is useful for you. It's actually doing the calculation with full double precision, which for numbers around 1 is about 16 decimal points. If you want to see all of those decimal points, you can change the format, and if I was to type in arts, there's all of those decimal points. However, most of the time we operate with format short, so we only see you know, enough to get by on. Uh, so MATLAB makes that, that call for us automatically. So MATLAB is doing the calculations with full precision, it's not rounding it, um, and you can change the display format if you want to see more of them. Alright, that gives you your first introduction to MATLAB head over to the other videos and look at specifics uh, suitable for what you're trying to do.